<laughs> hey guys, so here we are again with Living on a Dime, and there's a certain category of people where I feel like sometimes there's some hopelessness. Yeah. Some, the bottom has fallen out of my life, I can't look up, there's only down. And that would be those who feel like, um, not those who feel like. Like job loss. Job loss. Food stamps, um, you know, severe disability type things, yeah. And I have not personally been on food stamps, but I have family, I have sisters that have been on food stamps for short periods of time. <laughs> and because of the skills that they had to be able to look around and use their resources, they looked at food stamps as this enormous blessing from God mm -hmm. resource of, I couldn't afford to get food storage before, but now I can afford to get food storage. Yeah. And so if you're on food storage, if you're on food stamps, <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> so if you're on food stamps, have no fear. You actually, if you follow the recipes that are in this book about having basic ingredients, instead of buying things mm -hmm. in boxes like cake mix, instead of buying um, animal crackers, instead of buying uh, frozen pops for your kids, mm -hmm. you can instead get your basic ingredients that will allow you to make everything that you want to make from out of a bucket that has a bag of flour that mm -hmm. cost you maybe $5. Yeah. And so all you're lacking is really some skills. If you don't know how to make things from scratch, if you have a little bit of extra time on weekends, you can make recipes and put them in the freezer, even if you're a working mom. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. It's, it's not a matter of time. It's not a matter of budget. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of skill. And so that mm -hmm. should make everyone feel so much encouragement to just say, oh, if yeah. I figure out these few things, then all these raw ingredients are at my disposal and I can make food that is so much better for my family, so much healthier and so much less expensive, it will blow your mind. Well, and we have a problem on our live show <laughs> in that the recipes in, okay, so this is Diana Dime Cookbook, just so you guys know. Oh, you um, to say that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but we have a problem on our live show where the recipes are so quick and easy that I'm usually done cooking in like the first 15 minutes, right. but it's an hour show. And it really, these are the recipes that my mom used as a working mom with three jobs, two kids. She used these recipes to get her through and we did not eat out. We did not have the money to eat out. And when you learn that you can make maple glazed chicken with four ingredients, with chicken thighs that are 39 cents a pound, right. And it's super yummy. And you don't Everybody have to have a million it. pans. You can, no. you, you can have mm -hmm. a, a, a skillet and a baking sheet, or you can have one of those cast iron enamel pots, just that one mm -hmm. pot, and you can bake with it. Yeah. You mm -hmm. can fry with it. You can do everything with that one pot, so you don't have to have a kitchen full of utensils yep. yeah. either. And you don't have to have a big kitchen. You don't have to have a lot of, you know, crazy things like choppers and all that kind of stuff. You can do it with a knife and just a couple of pans. And even things like if you're really desperate, you can make things like soda crackers and graham crackers and your own homemade taco seasoning. If you make your own homemade taco seasoning, it costs you about five to 10 cents. Those little packets are a dollar to a dollar 50. Right, and you can just put it in a little mason jar mm -hmm. or a Ziploc. And I save my old spice jars and mm -hmm. I put it in there. Yeah. And so it's those little steps and tips that make it easier. And then you can take your extra food stamp money and buy food storage so that then later when you're able to get off of them, you have that built up. But then if another catastrophe happens, gives you a buffer. That buffer is so nice. People don't yeah. realize the stress it takes off of you knowing that you have that buffer. Well, and I think the other important thing is the, the skills that you pass on to your kids are what are going to help them so that they feel powerful when they get in bad situations in their life. Everybody has those situations mm -hmm. where they're like, we really don't have any money or we had a medical catastrophe, but mm -hmm. it doesn't matter who or, or where you are. It doesn't matter if you have a ton of money or no money. The skills you teach your kids are what they take into their own tough situations. And so if you are a working parent and you only have weekends, maybe, um, you know, hopefully you could spend some time with your kids teaching them how to cook. Yeah. Get them off of their tablets, get them off of the computer. Get them out in the garden with you, yeah. And and teach them these skills, not because there's anything uh, glorious about the skills, except that they can, they can take them with them. And I will say, because I have four kids, four biological kids and an adopted kid, um, 
they're going to complain. So don't yeah. expect to, don't expect them to say, oh sure mom, I'll go in the garden with you. It's like, do I have to go in the garden again? It's like, yes, you do. But you can start out but, with things like, like the after bath splash or, yeah, or something the that little girls. appeals to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's super simple to make. And then here's the kicker. This is where people do not realize the impact it makes. The kids, their self-confidence mm -hmm. goes through the roof when they have learned to bake a pie. Yep. Yeah. When they have learned to make their own Play-Doh. When they have learned how to make dinner for the family, and they did it all by themselves. Everyone's worried about kids' self-confidence, sitting there saying, oh, that's so good, Johnny. Oh yeah, this, that. No, they need the self-confidence of learning these skills. And then that translates to true self-confidence when they have the skills and they know they can do these things. Well, and especially if you're a working parent, your children knowing how to have these, and these are simple recipes, very simple, hamburger gravy on toast. <laughs> It doesn't get any simpler than yeah, that. Yeah, but it's all leftovers and it's a free meal almost. Yeah, yeah. And so even if you are going to the uh, soup kitchen, not the soup kitchen, what's the one where you get boxes? Food pantry. If you go to the food pantry, they generally have a pretty good mix of things and there's mm -hmm. bread in there. If they know how to make toast, if they then can make this very simple gravy, mm -hmm. then they can pour it over. And it means yep. that when you get home from work, if they can have this on the table, and I mean, my kids have done that for me. They have My kids mm -hmm. have some amazing skills and they frequently surprise me. Yeah. Sometimes the surprises are not as wonderful as others to eat, <laughs> but they feel like they have the confidence to do it. So sometimes you might want to be like, we have this much food for the yeah. week. Yeah. Please don't experiment. Please make this recipe. Yeah. Um, but I, I know for my family, we probably should have been on food stamps when I was a kid. We had seven kids and my, my dad was the one that worked. My mom stayed home. And um, as far as the amount of money we made it on in a month, uh, we probably should have been. But back in those days, food stamps weren't a real thing. Yeah. And so you just... you stayed hungry yeah. or you got really indentive yeah. and, and they didn't have food pantries and either, there were no really. food pantries no. you pretty much you know if you needed help you went to the church or you went to um your family and asked for yeah. help and but like in that case and my, my we did a series um on our youtube channel living on dime youtube channel we did we done a we have done a penny pinch and mama series we even went to the church and that backfired on us yeah and we have a video on that and it was bad and so you have to learn these skills so that if you don't have outside resources and that's all you have, let's say you go to the food pantry and you just have this one box. Okay, what am I going to do with this? Yeah. For you us, know? it was oatmeal and potatoes. We always knew we had oatmeal and potatoes yeah. and my mom would have a really good oil. Um, she would buy butter, even though it was expensive. It was really important to her that we have good mm -hmm. fat and, yeah. but we would eat oatmeal for breakfast. We'd eat potatoes for lunch and we'd eat potatoes for dinner. Fat is what makes you feel full. Yeah. It's the fat that makes you feel full. So, and flavor. Yeah. So if you can get a little bit of good fat in there, even bacon grease mm -hmm. is a good fat to use. Save your bacon grease and cook your eggs in it. Um, I use it to, <laughs> this is not many people know this, but mom taught me this. Grease the inside of your bread pan mm -hmm. and it gives your bread pan a really good flavor. Now that's not going to give you a lot of fat, but you can use it in your bread yeah. instead of shortening or, um, awesome. shh. <laughs> or instead of uh, butter, those more expensive ones, you right. can use that bacon grease if you need to and just put it in a mason jar, pour it off, uh, what's it called? Uh, Strain it, pour it in a mason jar, and then just keep it in your refrigerator. Yeah. Or if you're like my husband, you have it in a tin cup in on top of the stove and you never refrigerate it. And you just assume that by pouring it into a hot pan, it sterilizes it. Yeah. <laughs> I know, that's what grandma yeah. did. Yes. I know, I don't quite go that far. Right? right? <laughs> um, so I think, I think for those of you on food stamps, instead of looking at it as a bad place to be, look at it as the ultimate mm -hmm. exciting opportunity to be able to uh, move forward rather yeah. than feeling like it's a setback. How, what's the next thing I can do? Not the next to make thing, it five better. steps ahead. The nope. thing that is the next the step. The very next one. Does that mean pouring my bacon grease and straining it into a mason jar? That is a step ahead. Yeah. You're saving right there. Does it mean tonight I'm using my 39 cent chicken quarters to, um, cook dinner with some rice and some cut vegetables on the side or some canned vegetables? 
instead and save of the eat, bones. Yeah, and make instead of tomorrow, eating out, yeah, yeah, make bone broth with those bro bones. There's one more step. I'm making bone broth, and we're gonna have chicken soup the next night. And then chicken gravy. And noodles. Yeah, and then you're gonna take the the drippings off that and make gravy. Yeah, don't make yeah. them such big steps, and don't think so far ahead that you stress yourself out and you can't even figure out. Just do the next step right this minute. The other thing is water and tea versus pop and milk. Don't drink milk. Don't drink pop. Drink water. It fills you up better. It helps your body cleanse better. Milk is expensive. Pop is expensive. Mm -hmm. Juice is expensive. And none of them are terribly good for you to be drinking in large quantities. Mm -hmm. And so while I've been here at Tara's house, she has always had a teacup in her hand. And when I'm home, I have a teacup in my hand or I take a juice jar and I fill it with water and I'm drinking it water. Mm -hmm. We don't drink milk. Nope. Even though we have goats back home, we don't drink milk. Yeah. We, we turned it into yogurt, something that I feel has a little more nutritional value than just mm -hmm. chugging milk. I, can we do like a, a, a this versus this really yeah. quick and we yeah. can bounce off of yeah. it? So, so if your family likes to eat cereal, get oatmeal, not cold cereal. Cold mm -hmm. cereal is going to be almost $5 a box. And the oatmeal is going to be per pound so much less expensive because mm -hmm. Yeah. Cold cereal weighs nothing, and oatmeal, you can eat it raw as muesli with a few raisins mm -hmm. in it, or you can cook it and make it into a porridge, but the cost difference and then the nutritional difference, there's no sugar in the oatmeal. Yeah, so on page 65 in Dining I Dine, just because Tara's prepared, right. <laughs> right here we have an entire recipe, or it's not really a recipe, but an entire exactly. list of things you can add into oatmeal. It doesn't have to be you know, just the typical things that you normally think of. We have applesauce, dried apples, berries, mm -hmm. maple syrup to sweeten it, bananas, jellies, jam, chopped peaches, yogurt. Those kinds of things are all in here to give you ideas because people are like, well, I just don't like oatmeal. Well, you don't like oatmeal because you're not fixing it well. It's actually delicious. It's, <laughs> it's delicious actually if you really cook it the right good. Way. Yeah, it's really good. And let's say you, you run out of sugar, but you have a little bit of maple syrup put a little bit in there, you know, those kinds of things. Let's say you don't or have- Or jam. Yeah. Or honey. You have no sugar of any kind, no sweetener of any kind. Put some jam, jelly, honey, those kinds of things. Think outside the box of- And don't, di and you were talking about servings earlier. Don't give mm -mm. your kid a huge bowl of oatmeal and, you know, cook a small amount of oatmeal, mm -hmm. give them a quarter cup of oatmeal, let them eat that. It'll still be better nutritionally than cold yeah. cereal, even if they only eat a quarter cup. Serve them less. And then if they want more, they can have more. But it frustrates me to no end. I see parents fill their kids' plates or lunch boxes mm -hmm. are the worst. Guys, your kids are throwing away nine tenths of the food you send them at lunch. Makes My son sick. gets a sandwich and an apple for lunch. Yeah. That's all he gets. Chicken noodle and an apple for lunch or peaches in a little container, that kind of thing. I see kids, they have an apple, they have a sandwich, they have the fruit snacks, they have the juice box, and then they have cookies, pudding, puddings, applesauce, something like that. They have five to seven things in their lunchbox. It's ridiculous. You don't need that much right. food. And even things like tea. I love my tea. I drink a lot of tea. Most of it's decaf tea, but I reuse my tea bags. Yeah. I get two to three cups of tea out of one tea bag. I take a mason jar. I put my tea yep. bag in the mason jar and then I fill the mason jar with the boiling mm -hmm. water so that it's one quart of tea yep. as opposed to one Put it in cup. a teapot. Get a traditional teapot from the thrift store. For a dollar, maybe 75 cents. Yeah, or garage sale and put your tea in there. And not only that, it makes you feel more special. When you yeah. have something pretty like that, that you can pour it in. And then when you don't have money, you can have something pretty. Don't have a poverty mindset. Yes. Drives me crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is one of my pet peeves, but don't have a poverty mindset. Ugh, we're only eating oatmeal today. No, we're eating gourmet oatmeal that is $3.50 at McDonald's, oh, but right. we just paid 25 cents for it, and we still have the same cranberry. For the cranberry. whole family. Yeah. For 25 yeah. cents for the whole family. Yeah, and we still have the same cranberry and walnuts that they have in there. But the thing is, you're not filling your entire bowl with cranberries and walnuts. Yeah. You do a, you chop up your walnuts and you put maybe a half a teaspoon on each person's. You yeah. just need a taste. You don't need a whole uh, cup of <laughs> walnuts in 
one cup of oatmeal. You know, those types of things. So. Well, and we and we then put it in the fridge. If I did happen to, we like chia because mm -hmm. we can't we can't eat oatmeal because it's a grain. So we do chia. Um, cereal mm -hmm. and we mix it with flax seeds so we have flax seeds we do the chia seeds and then we do the we toast some pecans mm -hmm. that have been chopped and we put them in we put some raisins in and then what we do is after we've eaten what we have to eat we then put it into a mason jar and then we don't heat it up because it's actually really nice cold you just mm -hmm. if, if you have need a protein rich snack later you put some more in your bowl you put a little bit of milk on it and then you eat it cold and they charge three dollars for that at the health food store for something that's maybe a third a cup yeah. and it's it's considered mm -hmm. a delicacy and we make it home for pennies mm -hmm. yeah. um, and, and we do buy it we that's one thing that we do buy at Costco is that a lot of times they're organic beans mm -hmm. they're organic yeah. lentils they're organic chia seeds yeah. are so much less expensive than you can get at the health food store and you can keep them in your freezer so that they don't mm -hmm. go bad and let's say you have leftover oatmeal or muesli mm -hmm let's say the kids just don't want to eat it or you forget about it or something. And now I'm not talking about forgetting about it for like a week or two. I'm just saying you forget about it for a day or two. Throw it into muffins. Oh, that's a good idea. Throw it into quick bread. Mm -hmm. Throw it in your pancakes. Yeah. Put them in there so you're not wasting food and you don't have to use as much flour, that type of thing in your yeah. pancakes, those types of things, and you're not wasting food. People yeah. throw away about 50% of their food. The, the average American. Yeah. We sat and did a survey. At least. Yeah. At least. Survey with our viewers. And you have to start envisioning that you are throwing away dollar bills. No one envisions I'm throwing away dollar bills. And you really need to start envisioning. Okay, this half a lettuce, head of lettuce, there goes 50 cents. This um, cake that nobody liked that I bought, there goes $4. $4. Can you make like the scotty out of cake or something? Yeah, you can. Cut it up and then you just put it in the oven and let it... Dry cook out. on low, you know, like 275 and let it dry out. You have biscotti. Well, biscotti is like really expensive. And so just think of other ways to use them. That homemade bread that got stale, or I mean, just any bread that got stale, it doesn't have to be homemade, but if your bread gets stale, make it into croutons. Mm -hmm. Make it, chop it Again, up. It's in the book. Yeah, breadcrumbs, bread pudding, those kinds of things. Just stop wasting so much food. Well, okay, so do you have do you have another food? For me, it's like the, the oatmeal versus the cold cereal. Do you have another one that's a really big offender for you of this oh, versus yeah. this? Um, boneless, skinless chicken breast versus thighs and drumsticks. Right. Boneless, chicken bread, boneless skinless is $1.99 a pound. Um, thighs and drumsticks are like 39 cents a pound. Right. Um, it's, we did, actually, we did a show on it, and it's actually a ton cheaper to get the boneless, or to get the thighs and the drumsticks. And then you save the bones, put it in some water in the crock pot with an onion and a carrot. If you want, you don't have to put an onion and carrot, I do. Um, let it simmer overnight with a little bit of salt. The next day you have chicken broth. And you, you can, can make use for anything. Chicken and noodles, you can make chicken and dumplings, you could make a sauce out of it mm -hmm. and do shepherd's pie, yep. anything like that. Yep. Yeah. So, we should do more like this. This is a good one. Okay, what's another one for me? So another big offender is the quantity and the quality of the meat that you mm -hmm. purchase. So uh, what I like to do is buy a big package of inexpensive hamburger or a big package of inexpensive chicken and I'll cut it, I'll cook it, and then I'll put it into, and, and Tara does the same thing, is you put it into small bags and then into a big bag and you freeze it so that you can pull it out in individual things. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you have this little maybe three quarters of a cup of hamburger you put into tomato sauce to make um, spaghetti, or you can uh, take it and turn it into hamburger helper or, or, or hash or yeah, those kinds or of gravy. things. Or mm gravy. -hmm. And so, <coughs> pardon me. And so it's it's about using the meat for flavoring, mm -hmm. not for actual it's a condiment. Fault. Not a main dish. Yeah, use, use your condiment. starches yeah. like your potatoes mm -hmm. or your noodles as your filler along with vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, it's we both have gardens, vegetable gardens, mm -hmm. and you, I, you know, you don't want to go out. Some people think gardening means you go out and spend ten thousand dollars to re landscape everything. <laughs> And you have these beds that all came from Home Depot in a very spe yeah. expensive way. People would die if they saw my garden because I put my vegetables in with my flowers. Because mm -hmm. I'm actually a flower gardener. I prefer flower gardening. But I love a fresh tomato. Yeah. 
And so I, I just took in my landscape and I just put tomato plants here, cucumbers there, melons there. And it actually, people don't realize the cucumbers and the melons and those things are great mulch mm -hmm. and keeps the weeds down and around my water. flowers. And yeah. you don't need as much water because yeah. it shades the ground and yeah. keeps it cooler. Yeah, so you don't have to have a big garden. I just throw it in. And mo more times than not, we've moved a ton. <laughs> And more times than not, I wasn't able to have a garden. So I just got some pots, you know, like from, that I saw sitting on the side of the road. People had planted a tree and they were throwing away their pot, that kind of thing. And just put my tomatoes in there with some lettuce around the bottom, yeah. radishes around the bottom. Then when the tomato grew up, the radishes were done. You know, you could do that. So yeah, that's, you don't have to have a big spot. And the recipe makes a difference. It, the, mm -hmm. Your most prolific feeders that are gonna do the best for you are things like summer squash and cucumbers and pumpkins maybe tomatoes too, zucchini, yep. zucchini, because they sprawl, they, they need little soil, but then they sprawl and take over and they're abundant mm -hmm. and prolific. Cherry tomatoes are great. You, what I do is I grow cherry tomatoes, set them on the counter and the kids eat them like grapes. Yeah. So, but a lot of husbands really don't like zucchini. They think it's slimy or kids don't like zucchini, but, or maybe the same thing for cucumbers, mm -hmm. but you can make fridge cucumbers for mm -hmm. pickles. Yep. There are certain ways that you can- Zucchini eat. bread, zucchini yeah. cake. It doesn't have to be mm -hmm. slimy and mm -hmm. sauteed. I prefer it that way. And, and during the summer as a kid, you know, how much was it? It was three quarters of what we ate as a kid was summer squash mm -hmm. in the summer. We put an onion in and saute it and then we put the summer squash in and then that was the bulk of the yep. meal. Mm -hmm. And so, Think through these things and, and maybe if you've tried something from a can, try it fresh as mm -hmm. far as fruits or and vegetables. Frozen. Yeah. Or frozen. Yeah. But um, if, if especially if you are on food stamps, you have a little bit more wiggle room because you do have that mm -hmm. budget. And so instead of buying everything in a can, try some things fresh, try, try some things frozen. And, um, and I, for, for my family, it felt like wealth. Uh, at least for my I was sisters. Gonna say, when, it felt yeah. well when they had food stamps because they were eating better on food stamps mm -hmm. than they were before and they had money left over at the end of the month and when they had that money left over that's when they bought food storage. Yeah. Yeah. Now for those I know that usually uh, bound books are a little more expensive. Do you have this as an ebook too? Yeah so we have Dining on a Dime cookbook and it is $21.95 regular and $14.95 for the ebook. You are free to print it out for your own use but I will say depending on your printing situation because it is almost 500 pages right. it may cost more than the ten dollars you would save if you want to print it out but you can use it on your computer yep. Yep. and anything in the grocery store that you want to avoid is anything that's boxed and doesn't weigh very much yeah even your baking soda weighs more than a box of cold cereal mm -hmm. and so what you do want is you want basics you want baking soda you want salt you want sugar you want flour mm -hmm. you want some kind of cooking oil yep. um, your spices did you say spices i haven't said spices yet um your your main things, even if you get jarred canned foods like applesauce, peaches in you know their own, not their own juice. Peaches don't come in their own juice, but pear juice um, in their own juice, not in the heavy syrup. But here's the thing: like the heavy syrup, if you happen to get peaches in heavy syrup for whatever, if you're going to the food pantry or whatever, don't throw away that syrup. Right. Use it as a sweetener in your muffins, in your um, uh, pancakes in your, in your oatmeal. oatmeal. You can use it in your oatmeal. Mm -hmm. It makes a really yummy, the peach syrup makes a really yummy peach oatmeal flavor yeah. when you do it in your oatmeal. And if nothing else, you can chop up the whole thing and freeze it for popsicles for the kids. Yeah. Do the whole can, freeze it for the kids for popsicles. A yummy, yeah, it's higher on sugar, I get that. But I mean, you know, food pantries don't always give you a choice right. of what you have and those kinds of things so you know use it up what you have and don't throw away that good peach and pear juice because it can you can use my it kids just things. drink it they're like oh can my i have it mom fine just yeah. drink it my kids just drink too. it <laughs> yeah they love it so um so hopefully that was helpful to you there's not judgment in this this is we have come from places mm -hmm. where yeah. Both it, been there. <laughs> yeah, we've both been there and it's not it, the only thing is if you have a choice it's about um improving your your situation mm -hmm. while you have that as a as an option and use it as a tool use it as a tool mm -hmm. and with these kind of skills you may not need to go on food stamps again because it's so simple and easy to cook from scratch and mm -hmm. to just look around and see what you have that, yeah. that you can use yeah so living on a dime dining on a dime Good go one. check them out yep and um, in the description below yep and we're doing in on my channel we're doing a lot of prepping stuff lately because a lot of people seem to be kind of scared about what's happening in the world but really i don't think you need to be i think no. these are just everyday life skills 
and um, it, you're to feel encouraged and not uh, afraid. So don't live in fear. Live in confidence. Yeah. You know, uh, everything is fear based now and it shouldn't be. Yeah. So educate yourself and it will pay you back. Yep. So we'll talk to you later. Bye.